During the assessment, what is the nurse's primary goal for a confused and disoriented client diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder? 1. Explaining the unit rules. 2. Making the client feel safe. 3. Orienting the client to the unit. 4. Stabilizing the client's psychiatric needs. Answer 2. Making the client feel safe rationale. It is important to make a confused client feel safe. Explaining the unit rules and orienting the client to the unit are part of any admission process. Stabilizing psychiatric needs is a long-term goal. A moderately depressed client who was hospitalized two days ago suddenly begins smiling and reporting that the crisis is over. The client says to the nurse, I'm finally cured. Based on the client's behavior and statement, which intervention should the nurse include in the plan? 1. Suggesting reduction of medication. 2. Allowing increased in-room activities. 3. Increasing the level of suicide precautions. 4. Allowing the client off-unit privileges as needed. Answer 3. Increasing the level of suicide precautions rationale, a client who is moderately depressed and has only been in the hospital two days is unlikely to have such a dramatic cure. When a depression suddenly lifts, it is likely that the client may have made the decision to harm herself or himself. Suicide precautions are necessary to keep the client safe. The remaining options are therefore incorrect interpretations. The nurse is providing an educational session to new employees and the topic is abuse of the older client. The nurse helps the employees to identify which client is most typically a victim of abuse. 1. A man who has moderate hypertension. 2. A man who has newly diagnosed cataracts. 3. A woman who has advanced Parkinson's disease. 4. A woman who has early diagnosed Lyme disease. Answer 3. A woman who has advanced Parkinson's disease rationale, elder abuse includes physical, sexual, or psychological abuse, misuse of property, and violation of rights. The typical abuse victim is a woman of advanced age with few social contacts and at least one physical or mental impairment that limits her ability to perform activities of daily living. In addition, the client usually lives alone or with the abuser and depends on the abuser for care. The emergency department nurse is caring for an adult client who is a victim of family violence. Which priority information should be included in the discharge instructions? 1. Information regarding shelters. 2. Instructions regarding calling the police. 3. Instructions regarding self-defense classes. 4. Explaining the importance of leaving the violent situation. Answer 1. Information regarding shelters rationale. Tertiary prevention of family violence includes assisting the victim after the abuse has already occurred. The nurse should provide the client with information regarding where to obtain help, including a specific plan for removing the self from the abuser and information regarding escape hotlines and the location of shelters. An abused person is usually reluctant to call the police. Teaching the victim to fight back is not the appropriate action for the victim when dealing with a violent person. Explaining the importance of leaving the violent situation is important but a specific plan is necessary. During a group therapy session, a client begins yelling, I can't listen to this. You people are no different from the ones I have to deal with at home. What is the nurse's immediate action? 1. Inform the yelling client to leave the group immediately. 2. Call security personnel to the session to ensure everyone's safety. 3. Ask the other clients to describe how the aggressive yelling made them feel. 4. Firmly reinforce limits on behavior, stating that aggressive yelling will not be tolerated. Answer 4. 
firmly reinforce limits on behavior, stating that aggressive yelling will not be tolerated. Rationale, the client is displacing anger. The nurse sets limits on behavior, reinforces group rules, and ensures physical safety and a sense of control. Requiring the client to leave the group would be an immediate action if the client presents with escalating behavior. The question presents no data indicating such behavior. Calling security and exploring the responses of other clients are premature actions at this point. Exploration may occur later in the group process. When planning the discharge of a client with chronic anxiety, which is the most appropriate maintenance goal? 1. Suppressing feelings of anxiety. 2. Identifying anxiety producing situation. 3. Continuing contact with a crisis counselor. 4. Eliminating all anxiety from daily situations. Answer 2. Identifying anxiety producing situations rationale, recognizing situations that produce anxiety allows the client to prepare to cope with anxiety or avoid a specific stimulus. Counselors will not be available for all anxiety producing situations and this option does not encourage the development of internal strengths. Suppressing feelings will not resolve anxiety. Elimination of all anxiety from life is impossible. During a group session, a client threatens to punch every one of you. Which is the appropriate initial nursing action? 1. Call security to come to the session immediately. 2. Require the client to leave the group immediately. 3. Remind the client that punching anyone is a reason for being placed into seclusion. 4. Remind the client that talking about personal anger is appropriate but acting on it is not. Answer 4. Remind the client that talking about personal anger is appropriate but acting on it is not. Rationale. If a client threatens to act out physically during a group session, the client should be told that he or she can talk about his or her anger but cannot act on it during the group session. Because the client's action was a threat, it is best for the nurse to deal with the behavior. The remaining options are not appropriate as initial reactions. The nurse is assigned to a client who is pacing, agitated, and using aggressive gestures and rapid speech. The nurse should determine that which action is the priority of care at this time. 1. Providing the other clients on the unit with a sense of comfort and safety. 2. Providing a safe place for the client to pace that is away from the other clients. 3. Offering the client a less stimulated area in which to calm down and gain control. 4. Assisting in caring for the client in a controlled environment, such as a quiet room. Answer 2. Providing a safe place for the client to pace that is away from the other client. Rationale, safety for the client and other clients is the priority. The correct option is the only choice that addresses the client's and other clients' safety needs. This action also focuses on the client's need to pace and safely physically work off anxious feelings. None of the other options addresses the needs of all the clients. A hospitalized client with a history of alcohol misuse tells the nurse, I am leaving now. I have to go. I don't want any more treatment. I have things that I have to do right away. The client has not been discharged and is scheduled for an important diagnostic test to be performed in one hour. After the nurse discusses the client's concerns with the client, the client dresses and begins to walk out of the hospital room. What action should the nurse take? 1. Call the nursing supervisor. 2. Call security to block all exit areas. 3. Restrain the client until the primary health care provider, PHCP, can be reached. 4. Tell the client that the client cannot return to this hospital again if the client leaves now. Answer 1. Call the nursing supervisor. 
Rationale. Most health care facilities have documents that the client is asked to sign relating to the client responsibilities when the client leaves against medical advice. The client should be asked to wait to speak to the PHCP before leaving and to sign the against medical advice document before leaving. If the client refuses to do so, the nurse cannot hold the client against the client's will. Therefore, in this situation, the nurse should call the nursing supervisor. The nurse can be charged with false imprisonment if a client is made to believe wrongfully that she or he cannot leave the hospital. Restraining the client and calling security to block exit constitutes false imprisonment. All clients have a right to health care and cannot be told otherwise. A homebound client confidentially discusses suicidal plans with a visiting nurse, based on professional duty to observe confidentiality. Which statement describes the nurse's obligation to the client? 1. Arrange for the client to go to the local mental health center daily for counseling. 2. Ask the client's permission to reveal the suicidal plans to the primary health care provider, PHCP. 3. Assure the client that the confidence between nurse and client will be strictly adhered to. 4. Share that the risk to the client's safety requires that the client's PHCP be notified. Answer 4. Share that the risk to the client's safety requires that the client's PHCP be notified. Rationale in this situation. The nurse must override the duty to observe confidentiality and must notify the client's PHCP about the client's suicidal ideation. The nurse's first duty is to keep the client safe. None of the other options addresses the client's need for protection regarding his or her suicidal ideations. A manic client begins to make sexual advances toward visitors in the day room. When the nurse firmly states that this is inappropriate and will not be allowed, the client becomes verbally abusive and threatens physical violence to the nurse. Based on the analysis of this situation, which intervention should the nurse implement? 1. Place the client in seclusion for 30 minutes. 2. Tell the client that the behavior is inappropriate. 3. Escort the client to his or her room with the assistance of other staff. 4. Tell the client that his or her telephone privileges are revoked for 24 hours. Answer 3. Escort the client to his or her room with the assistance of other staff. Rationale. The client is at risk for injury to self and others and should be escorted out of the day room. Seclusion is premature in this situation. Telling the client that the behavior is inappropriate has already been attempted by the nurse. Denying privileges may increase the agitation that already exists in this client. Which roommate choice is least appropriate for a client diagnosed with anorexia nervosa who is in a state of starvation? 1. A client with pneumonia 2. A client who had back surgery 3. A client with a fractured pelvis 4. A client who has had a myocardial infarction. Answer 1. A client with pneumonia rationale. The client who has been starving has a compromised immune system. Having a roommate with pneumonia would put the client at risk for infection. The other clients are acceptable because their health problems do not compromise the immune system of the client with starvation. The nurse is reviewing the record of a client scheduled for electroconvulsive therapy ECT, to treat depression. Which medical diagnosis, if noted on the client record, would indicate a need to contact the psychiatrist scheduled to perform the ECT? 1. Type 2 diabetes mellitus 2. Peripheral vascular disease 3. Recent myocardial infarction 4. Newly diagnosed hyperthyroidism. Answer 3. Recent myocardial infarction rationale. Several conditions present risks in the client scheduled for ECT. These include recent myocardial infarction, stroke, brain attack, 
and cerebrovascular malformation or an intracranial lesion. The conditions in the remaining options do not present specific risks associated with ECT. The nurse's planning care for a client being admitted to the nursing unit who attempted suicide. Which priority nursing intervention should the nurse include in the plan of care? 1. One-to-one -one suicide precautions 2. Suicide precautions with 30-minute checks 3. Checking the whereabouts of the client every 15 minutes 4. Asking the client to report suicidal thoughts immediately. Answer 1. One-to-one -one suicide precautions rationale. One-to-one -one suicide precautions are required for a client who has attempted suicide. Options 2 and the 3rd of may be appropriate, but not at the present time, considering the situation. Option 4 also may be an appropriate nursing intervention, but the priority is identified in the correct option. The prevention is constant supervision so that the nurse may intervene as needed if the client attempts to harm himself or herself. The nurse is conducting an initial assessment of the client in crisis. When assessing the client's perception of the precipitating event that led to the crisis, which is the most appropriate question? 1. With whom do you live? 2. Who is available to help you? 3. What leads you to seek help now? 4. What do you usually do to feel better? Answer 3. What leads you to seek help now? Rationale, the nurse's initial task when assessing a client in crisis is to assess the individual or family in the problem. The more clearly the problem can be defined, the better the chance a solution can be found. The correct option would assist in determining data related to the precipitating event that led to the crisis. Options 1 and 2 assess situational supports. Option 4 assesses personal coping skills. The nurse is assessing a client who was admitted 24 hours ago for a fractured humerus. Which findings should alert the nurse to the potential for alcohol withdrawal delirium? 1. Hypotension, ataxia, hunger 2, stupor, lethargy, muscular rigidity 3. Hypotension, coarse hand tremors, lethargy 4. Hypertension, changes in level of consciousness, hallucinations. Answer 4. Hypertension, changes in level of consciousness, hallucinations rationale, symptoms associated with alcohol withdrawal delirium typically include anxiety, insomnia, anorexia, hypertension, disorientation, hallucinations, changes in level of consciousness, agitation, fever, and delusions. The nurse notes that a client with schizophrenia and receiving an antipsychotic medication is moving her mouth, protruding her tongue, and grimacing as she watches television. The nurse determines that the client is experiencing which medication complication? 1. Parkinsonism 2. Tardive dyskinesia 3. Hypertensive crisis 4. Neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Answer 2. Tardive dyskinesia rationale. Tardive dyskinesia is a reaction that can occur from antipsychotic medication. It is characterized by uncontrollable involuntary movements of the body and extremities, particularly the tongue. Parkinsonism is characterized by tremors, mask-like facies, rigidity, and a shuffling gait. Hypertensive crisis can occur from the use of monoamine oxidase inhibitors and is characterized by hypertension, occipital headache, radiating frontally, neck stiffness and soreness, nausea, and vomiting. Neuroleptic malignant syndrome is a potentially fatal syndrome that may occur at any time during therapy with neuroleptic antipsychotic medications. It is characterized by dyspnea or tachypnea tachycardia or irregular pulse rate fever, blood pressure changes, increased sweating, loss of bladder control, and skeletal muscle rigidity.
which piece of subjective data obtained during assessment of a severely anxious client would indicate the possibility of post-traumatic stress disorder? 1. I'm always crying. 2. I'm afraid to go outside. 3. I keep reliving the abuse. 4. I keep washing my hands over and over. 3. I keep reliving the abuse. 4. I keep washing my hands over and over. Answer 3. I keep reliving the abuse. Rationale in post-traumatic stress disorder. The client relives the traumatic experience. Only the correct option includes the defining characteristic symptom of post-traumatic stress disorder. Fear of going outside is characteristic of a phobia, while always crying may indicate depression. Excessive hand washing is a characteristic of obsessive compulsive disorder. Which statement made by a client who has recently experienced an emotional crisis is most likely to assure the nurse that the client has returned to her pre-crisis level of functioning? 1. My husband tells me that I'm back to my old cheerful self. 2. My boss tells me that I'm being considered for a promotion and a raise. 3. When I find myself getting stressed, I immediately use the relaxation techniques I've learned. 4. I have a different perspective on life now. I'm more confident of my ability to handle any problem. Answer 2. My boss tells me that I'm being considered for a promotion and a raise. Rationale. The report that the client is doing well at work indicates a level of functioning amidst stress that is at least equal to that of the pre-crisis period. Being told by her spouse that she is again cheerful is a positive improvement but is not indicative of general functioning. Being self-aware and recognizing the need to implement coping methods appropriately when stress triggers are present is a positive indicator of improvement, as is an improved sense of empowerment and confidence in handling problems. But neither indicates the true ability to successfully handle stress efficiently or the client return to her pre crisis level of functioning. The nurse is preparing a client with schizophrenia, a history of command hallucinations for discharge, by providing instructions on interventions for managing hallucinations and anxiety. Which statement in response to these instructions suggests to the nurse that the client has a need for additional information? 1. My medications will help my anxious feelings. 2. I'll go to support group and talk about what I am feeling. 3. When I have command hallucinations, I'll call a friend for help. 4. I need to get enough sleep and eat well to help prevent feeling anxious. Answer 3. When I have command hallucinations, I'll call a friend for help. Rationale. The risk for impulsive and aggressive behavior may increase if a client is receiving command hallucinations to harm self or others. If the client is experiencing a hallucination, the nurse or health care counselor, not a friend, should be contacted to discuss whether the client has intentions to hurt herself or himself or others. Talking about auditory hallucinations can interfere with subvocal muscular activity associated with a hallucination. The client's statements in the remaining options will aid in wellness but are not specific interventions for hallucinations if they occur. An adolescent has been prescribed an amphetamine to help manage a diagnosis of attention deficient hyperactivity disorder to best minimize the risk of abuse and or overdose. The nurse expects that the medication will be administered via which method? 1. Sublingual tablets 2. Transdermal patch 3. Rectal suppository 4. Weekly intramuscular injections Answer 2. Transdermal patch rationale. The application of a transdermal patch is the method best suited to minimizing the risk of abuse and or overdose from an amphetamine because it manages the release of the medication without requiring the client's handling of the medication. The remaining options lack that component.
The nurse is caring for a client diagnosed with paranoid personality disorder who is experiencing disturbed thought processes. In formulating a nursing plan of care, which best intervention should the nurse include? 1. Increase socialization of the client with peers. 2. Avoid using a whisper voice in front of the client. 3. Begin to educate the client about social supports in the community. 4. Have the client sign a release of information to appropriate parties for assessment purposes. Answer 2. Avoid using a whisper voice in front of the client. Rationale Disturbed thought process related to paranoid personality disorder is the client's problem. And the plan of care must address this problem. The client is distrustful and suspicious of others. The members of the healthcare team need to establish a rapport and trust with the client. Laughing or whispering in front of the client would be counterproductive. The remaining options ask the client to trust on a multitude of levels. These options are actions that are too intrusive for a client with this disorder. During a home visit, the nurse suspects that a young daughter of the client is bulimic. The nurse bases this suspicion on which primary characteristics of bulimia? 1. Refusing to eat and excessive exercising. 2. Eating only vegetables and fruits and fasting. 3. Hoarding of food and difficulty controlling food intake. 4. Eating a lot of food in a short period of time and misuse of laxatives. Answer 4. Eating a lot of food in a short period of time and misuse of laxatives rationale, eating binges and purging are the characteristic that would be seen in bulimia. Eating only certain types of foods may reflect a preference but does not indicate bulimia. Bulimic persons usually do not refuse to eat, rather, they binge and purge. Hoarding of food may indicate another problem. A client who is recovering from benzodiazepine dependence says, I've lost so many people. First, my brother dies of cancer, then my husband leaves me for a 20-year-old. I wish I had one of those pills right now. Which statement by the nurse would be therapeutic? 1. Can you tell me what you think the pills can do for you? 2. It sounds as if you feel that all of this has just happened to you. 3. It must have been a terrible loss for you when your brother died. 4. How did your husband's interest in a younger woman make you feel? Answer 1. Can you tell me what you think the pills can do for you? Rationale in the correct option. The nurse reflects back to the client what she is verbalizing and assists her to assess coping strategies. It is non therapeutic for the nurse to change the focus from the client's expression of feelings related to the benzodiazepine. Asking the client to self assess her own behavior in events is premature. A client experiencing disturbed thought processes believes that his food is being poisoned. Which communication technique should the nurse use to encourage the client to eat? 1. Using open-ended questions in silence 2. Sharing personal preferences regarding food choices 3. Documenting reasons why the client does not want to eat 4. Offering opinions about the necessity of adequate nutrition. Answer 1. Using open-ended questions in silent rationale. Open-ended questions in silence are strategies used to encourage clients to discuss their problems. Sharing personal food preferences is not a client-centered intervention. The remaining options are not helpful to the client because they do not encourage the client to express feelings. The nurse should not offer opinions and should encourage the client to identify the reasons for the behavior. The nurse has been closely observing a client who has been displaying aggressive behaviors. The nurse observes that the behavior displayed by the client is escalating. Which nursing intervention is most helpful to this client at this time? Select all that apply. 1. Initiate confinement measures. 2. Acknowledge the client's behavior. 3. 
Assist the client to an area that is quiet. 4. Maintain a safe distance from the client. 5. Allow the client to take control of the situation. Answer 2. Acknowledge the client's behavior. 3. Assist the client to an area that is quiet. 4. Maintain a safe distance from the client. Rationale during the escalation period. The client's behavior is moving toward loss of control. Nursing actions include taking control, maintaining a safe distance, acknowledging behavior, moving the client to a quiet area, and medicating the client if appropriate. To initiate confinement measures during this period is inappropriate. Initiation of confinement measures, if needed, is most appropriate during the crisis period. The nurse recognizes which assessment and diagnostic data is being associated with a newly diagnosed schizophrenic client. Select all that apply. 1. A birthday of March 30th. 2. A loss of interest in hobbies. 3. A suicide attempt six months ago. 4. Adopted by family at age 14 months. 5. Brain scan shows increased blood flow to the frontal lobe. 6. Magnetic resonance imaging shows temporal lobe atrophy. Answer 1. A birthday of March 30th. 2. A loss of interest in hobbies. 3. A suicide attempt six months ago. 6. Magnetic resonance imaging shows temporal lobe atrophy rationale. A late winter. Early spring birthday, viral theory, apathy and anhedonia, the inability to experience pleasure from activities usually found enjoyable, suicidal ideations, and atrophy of brain tissue are all common to individuals exhibiting symptomatology of schizophrenia. Blood flow within the brain is generally decreased. No data support that adoption itself increases the risk for schizophrenia. Which assessments should a nurse closely monitor when caring for a hospitalized client diagnosed with bulimia nervosa? Select all that apply. 1. Electrolyte levels. 2. Exercise pattern. 3. Intake and output. 4. Pupillary response. 5. Elimination pattern. 6. Deep tendon reflexes. Answer 1. Electrolyte levels 3. Intake and output 5. Elimination patterns rationale. The client with bulimia nervosa is likely to induce frequent vomiting and use diuretics and laxatives excessively. This places the client at risk for fluid and electrolyte imbalances. The nurse should monitor for both of these in this client. Excessive exercise is a characteristic of anorexia nervosa not a characteristic of clients with bulimia. Changes in pupillary response and deep tendon reflexes are monitored in other disorders but are not associated with bulimia. The nurse is planning to instruct a mental health client and a family about the importance of medication compliance. The nurse should plan for which interventions that are associated with increased compliance Select all that apply. 1. Including the family in the medication planning process. 2. Arranging medication administration to occur once per day. 3. Working with a psychiatrist to find the right medication at the right dose. 4. Providing the client with the injectable, long-acting form of the medication if available. 5. Working with a psychiatrist to find the medication that provides the least side effects for the client. Answer 1. Including the family in the medication planning process. 3. Working with a psychiatrist to find the right medication at the right dose. 4. Providing the client with the injectable, long-acting form of the medication if available. 5. Working with a psychiatrist to find the medication that provides the least side effects for the client rationale. Including the family in the medication planning process providing clients with the injectable, long-acting form of the medication. And finding the right medication at the right dose that provides the fewest side effects for the client are measures that will promote compliance.
Not all medications can be given on a once-per-day dosing regimen because of their short half-life. The nurse is caring for a pediatric client who is recovering from abuse and neglect. Place in order of priority the interventions that the nurse performs. List from most important to least important. 1. Clean and dress wounds. 2. Provide emotional support. 3. Administer pain medications. 4. Ensure environmental safety. Answer 3. Administer pain medications. 1. Clean and dress wounds. 4. Ensure environmental safety. 2. Provide emotional support rationale. Interventions that may be performed by the nurse when caring for a client who is a victim of abuse or neglect include administering pain medications providing wound care, using assistive devices to support sprains or fractures, educating the client and family about self-care, as well as education on support programs that provide awareness and emotional support. Also, Ensuring that the victim is in a safe environment both in the hospital and when the victim is discharged is a priority. Administering pain medications and cleaning and dressing wounds should be done first followed by ensuring environmental safety and providing emotional support.